Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to T4C Culture TV. I'm your host Hotshot and uh, today uh, I'm joined by Aditya Ramesh. Hey bro, how are you? Hi Akash, I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I am very good. Uh, it's been a while since we spoke. It's been almost a month since yeah, we, you know. Yeah, it's going to be a month. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Yeah, like uh, we spoke about Liverpool uh, that time. Uh, things were a lot different. you know that that just goes to show how, like how things change in a matter of months uh, last time we spoke we were previewing the everton game and we were talking about uh, liverpool's title challenges and uh, how do you still like uh, come as of this recording uh, i think you do not have apart from matip and robertson you do not have a fit uh, starting lineup of center backs am i right yeah so we don't have two of uh, starting 11 center backs that's joe gomez and virgil van dijk both of yeah. them are certain to be out of the season then there joe is joe gomez as well yeah joe gomez is likely to he is i don't know bro i just saw today like we were going through some of the podcasts and where okay. people are expecting somewhere between 10 months and to one year looks like it's a serious one a patella yeah. tendon that's what they are saying Oh, so okay. looks to be a very serious one yeah so out of two primary center backs for the entire season like and yeah what we are just eight games into the season which is yeah. massive loss and trent alexander arnold is away for four weeks so that yeah. should be somewhere in december second week so I the think... back line right now is joel matip and andy robertson that's it yeah i think uh, compared to your other uh, of your other defense trent seems to be the most minimal like it's a blessing like that he's only out for like four weeks yeah. true because uh, yeah. i don't know what happened the city game he was playing well for 60 odd minutes then yeah. he just fell to the ground and he felt his hamstring or something so but yeah fine anyway two weeks has gone in the international break itself so it should be just two weeks after this uh, so that's yeah. why i'm expecting somewhere december first week uh, hopefully he recovers by that time you know it's a speedy yeah, yeah. recovery for him hopefully, wish him all the yeah. best yeah uh, so like you spoke about the city game he got injured off in the city game so let's talk a little bit about that uh, how did you feel uh, going into that game knowing that uh, like you said uh, Van Dijk was out, hmm. Fabinho was out, uh, and Klopp unveiled a new formation. Basically, the four two two, four four two, slash four two three one, slash four two four. It was a hybrid of all formations. It was so, the most amazing formation that I've seen. <laughs> yeah, uh, like before that, uh, on the previous part, uh, we were talking about uh, Diogo Jota, and you said that you called it like before he hit his form. Like you said that uh, it was a really good buy. Uh, he's both footed he is able to play anywhere across the front three and he's been really showing uh, how valuable he is to liverpool's uh, front three to their True. attack diogo jota started along with firmino salah mane uh, what did you think about that lineup so first of all going into the game against city this early at the season and without virgil van dijk or thiago or fabinho all that i was hoping was for a point I, yeah. I I I I genuinely took one point at Etihad with both of my hands at the end of the day. Like, see, yeah, yeah uh, see, it is difficult if you see that. Uh, see, you don't have three of your first eleven players, and to play City, see, despite them not really being the City they used to be two years back or for the last two years, still Man City's Man City, and they are still coached by the, one of the best coaches in the world, Pep Guardiola. So going into this game without Firmino being in form, I think there was a lot of I, no, if you actually see, even Trent Alexander-Arnold isn't that much of a form. He isn't in much of a form. Uh, Center back crisis was there. Joe Gomez was constantly getting partnered with different center backs. So, yeah. Uh, so that whole situation was very difficult when you play against City. But thankfully, we came away with one point. I think it was a deserved one point, and I think it was yeah. a fair result as well, considering what happened in the game. Yeah, it was a good game, and uh, maybe we could have won the game. Maybe we were a little sloppy at the final third, uh, and yeah. Firmino's form has been a huge worry for the last eight or nine months. To be very fair, yeah, uh, we'll so, get to yeah, the Firmino topic. Game. Yeah, we we'll get to the Firmino topic later. But uh, from the get-go, it seemed that uh, once 
Trent uh, got injured, like Klopp was uh, more intent to sit back. Let City have more of the ball and let City uh, try to break you guys down and you guys m- try to hit them on the counter. So, like now that uh, your injury crisis has increased, do you think Klopp will follow the similar kind of pattern? Because I think uh, even during the City game, City had more passes per defensive action, which is a very, it's a, it's a rarity under Jurgen Klopp. So now do you think that you are not able to field your strongest 11? Will he try to uh, follow this kind of pattern of sitting back and hitting players, hitting teams on the counter? No, I think, in fact, if you ask me, I think it's going to be the opposite. Because, see, you really don't have the strongest of players to defend. See, if you really want to sit back and if you want to hit the teams on counter, that's literally you inviting the opposition to your box or just wanting them to play in your half and then take possession of it and hit them on counter. But I really don't think we are equipped enough to do that as things stand. So, I am expecting us to, for us and for us to go, what to say, every game, I think it's only going to be outscoring the opponents. And yeah. see, uh, however good Alisson is at the back, Still, there is no Virgil van Dijk, there is no Trent, there is no, there is not another centre-back. Because uh, I am assuming that without another centre-back, it's only going to be Fabinho again at the back. Yeah. So, again, he's not a traditional centre-back. He's a defensive midfielder. So, it's going to be difficult. And the only way that I see Liverpool playing this season is how they used to play during Klopp's initial years. Of yeah, just the, attacking, yeah. attacking and just attacking. I think that's the only yeah. way... And they have also got the right people for it. And Diogo Jota has been in the form of his life. And mm. yeah, and Salah, Mane, same. Only worry is Firmino. But I think Shakiri is back now. So that's a huge plus for Liverpool. And after the City game, Klopp has hinted that he will not be opposed to the idea of playing four attackers every game from now. Oh, okay. So yeah, so by the looks of it... Uh, we will be seeing a lot more games with the similar formation that we fielded against City. Uh, you said Shakiri might be a regular starter from now on. Do you think he takes the place of Firmino and do you think uh, Firmino should be dropped? See, Akash, the thing is, uh, Firmino, like, he's a world-class player. I think there's no doubting about his potential or anything. But then the thing is, I think the five years of non-stop running and working constantly for the team and after like they have won whatever there is I think yeah. just maybe there is a drop in motivation can be one of the reasons and there can also be one thing is he's fatigued and I think yeah. he's played the most minutes for club in these last five years so yeah he's never been injured right the only injury that I am able to recollect at this point is the one which he had towards the end of 18-19 season. The one where we okay. won the Champions League. Towards okay, the okay. end, he missed around a couple of games. But that was about it in these last five years. He has never missed a, he has never missed like game of a series of games due to injury or anything. And he, his form has gone down. Now, let's talk the facts now. So, his, his form has gone down. And ideally, if even if four attackers are not going to play... I think Diego Jota has to take his place for yeah. a very simple reason that he's been firing left, right and center and Firmino is not able to do it. So, it only makes sense that when you're going with three attackers for you to field Diego Jota along with Mane and Salah. And if and even if four attackers are going to play, in my opinion, I think Shakiri should start. Maybe Firmino needs rest for a while for two, three straight games that he, he requires that rest or something. But yeah. I think even in the City game, there were chances where he could have done something better, but then he's just not able to. That's the whole problem. It's been a really unlucky start to the season from Liverpool. And coupled to that, you've got these international breaks and all sorts of nonsense going on because even <laughs> now, even now, like uh, players have been tested uh, left, right and centre for being COVID positive. And even now, your players also... Uh, latest news has broken out that uh, Salah's tested positive for COVID. Coupled with your injuries, is is an international break like really necessary at this point of time? I think uh, I think if I start talking about this, I think I'll left, I'll really lose my mind because <laughs> see, I never really understood the point of international breaks even on a very normal season. Okay? Yeah. 
see unless you have unless you really have the euro qualifiers or the world cup qualifiers that is understandable okay but then i just never understood the concept of having a separate tournament called nations league it yeah. it never makes sense see nine months of regular season and these guys get two months break and they just nine months work their ass off bro okay yeah. for very first week and secondly uh that in itself was a very huge task because traveling around the country some players move like from europe to another country to play a pointless friendly yeah. so i always I was against the concept of international break unless it never unless it had some sort of meaning to it yeah but especially this season when you know there is covid crisis and you know the season is extremely short in terms yeah. of the matches played are the same but then the calendar year is very small the season uh, period to have international break at this point of time is not making sense on any grounds so you can understand scotland playing yesterday they had a euro qualifiers and congrats to scotland they have made it to the top flight tournament for the first time in 23 years and i'm extremely happy because it's andy robertson who's the team to yeah, yeah. So he, he was, he's a captain right yeah he's a captain yeah so i can understand the uh, an international break being there for necessary games like where yeah. it matters yeah. but then there are so many friendlies there are so many the, the nations league what does it count for it doesn't count for anything unless like i don't know if i can say this in air or whatever <laughs> but i just feel it's another tournament for cristiano ronaldo stat pad is number <laughs> i don't i don't hot know takes, bro. hot takes <laughs> No, I really don't get the point of having friendlies at this point of time. It never made sense. That's one thing. Yeah. But to have it in a pandemic like this, see, if you could ask me, I would still suggest to have the Champions League to follow the same model that they follow towards the end of the knockouts. To have a specific yeah. country or just have one leg ties and cut down on all the traveling because yeah. the, the COVID is spreading and people are getting tested positive because of the travel history. 100%. and sala now like as we were talking we were uh, we heard the news of sala getting positive and why he has traveled all the way to egypt so it never makes sense bro uefa and fifa just don't care about the players i think that's a that's a big issue that needs addressing yeah. and they are again like i don't know bro money minded again because of uh, more broadcasting of these pointless games and everything and in my strong feeling is that some clubs are reluctant to send their players up to these friendlies and my strong feeling is sometimes they give out these false injury news or even may, they might even give the covid news out you you yeah. never know and yeah. and and, I, and i'm not really going to fault them because see for instance hazard comes back after for real madrid okay hazard comes back after 10 whole months okay and there has been players i think casemiro got tested for covid and another player at real got tested for covid now we have another international break he has just started out his real madrid game i think he started yeah. a couple of weeks back now again you want to send him to belgium and play a pointless friendly i don't know what is the point see the season is short the squads aren't massive for any team as such and and did, and, and did you see the premier league numbers that they have released 99 no. players have been injured so far yeah higher incidence of muscle injuries yeah There's and been it's not four sixty players. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think okay. there are around four sixty players, cons- uh, assuming there are twenty three people for one one team. So out of four yeah. sixty players, you have almost hundred people out. <laughs> I don't know, bro. I think it's extremely bad. Twenty percent of the players missing. Twenty twenty five percent almost. And yeah. this, is, this is how it's going to be for all teams. It's going to be a massive season, and these international breaks are only like. adding fuel to the fire it makes no sense whatsoever yeah uh, even uh, dejan lovren came out and said compared to last season and this season the pre season i had only 8 days left to recover so that shows what kind of uh, stress and uh, mental kind of attitude these players are going through but uh, just to play a devil's advocate like uh, i've seen a lot of reasons that that claim to be like uh, these players especially with the euros happening next summer like these international tournaments are done to help build camaraderie and help uh, build team cohesion and to gel together before a big tournament do you think that's a fair reason to uh, say that uh, international breaks are necessary or what okay see uh, 
okay in a way i can understand that this being true okay like uh, see the team chemistry is very important end of the day because each okay. club deploys one one style and when you finally get up to your national team there is going to be some sort of there's not going to be a much of understanding mm-hmm. i think it will take time see i can understand yeah. that but then is it really necessary mm-hmm. in today's date is what the question is like yeah. um, there is a pandemic going on there's a lot of restrictions in countries and i think uk is getting bad now again i think uk is again hitting some yeah, big numbers they've gone under lockdown again yeah yeah so i think liverpool's under lockdown i'm not exactly sure i think they are only okay. uh, they have just had some sort of a no they, they didn't have any sort of restrictions for the football as such but then yeah they have again gone into lockdown i, I guess so the only question that is again coming down is whether it is necessary for at this point of time what i would rather suggest is finish the season schedule your euros or whatever like a month or two later from the time the season gets over let the team bonds bro like uh, we are in india we know how ipl is happening yeah. this is how it happens like different countries people are there they just come one one and a half months in advance they still do it no i think they when a yeah. top sport like cricket can do it i think football can very much do it yeah they can so it is not do really it. necessary for them to like go out every single month and play and i it doesn't make sense to me at all and even tony cruz also also come out and said like uh, fifa and uefa do not care for the players they are just pawns why don't like players like try to form a union and try to like uh, revolt against uefa or fifa like something like that see you can debate for on both sides if you ask me okay one thing is yeah. that big players can take such a decision as in like when they like now you know big players as in when we are talking someone like lionel messi cristiano ronaldo neymar mbappe i think people who are playing at the highest level could have an influence yeah. but then there are again the other set of players who dream to play for the national teams i think mm-hmm. it's a it's a huge thing for certain players and yeah. sometimes when like for instance when someone like uh, when some of these players the regulars get injured there are always the other people who are waiting to make it to the top at some form or the other so you can always make the case on both sides that like yeah they can make a decision but at the same time end of the day it's the national team so i think it is difficult for the players to reject as well because they cannot do it whole heartedly because it's end of the day it's the national team and i think every footballer aspires to play at that level at some point in some form or the other i think the fifa and uefa has to like i think end of the day it's they can take decisions without any sort of uh influence or anything and it's high time they really look into all this because it's scary because at this rate players will get fatigued and we might run them down bro i don't know yeah. this is going to be massive for every team like i think i was very confident i think i don't remember if i told this at your pod or was it on another pod i was extremely confident at the season starting that yeah we will defend the title yeah. but considering that we have we are, we are having two people out of the season with just eight games into it because see it is a such a how do i say it it's going to be a math season so every mm-hmm. team is going to go through this it's i'm not saying only liverpool will go through this or xyz is going to go through this every team is going to go through all of this at some point of time so these international breaks never do just don't make sense to me yeah I, and i really like your idea that said like uh, we can just condense all the international tournaments and qualifications into one summer instead of playing them over the weeks like in uh, premier league one game and then uh, the international break during the week and then another now coming back to liverpool what do you think will be your best defensive light up now currently ah uh, it's very tricky bro like i i have never imagined a situation like this would come up to like Yeah. have two of your primary center backs out for a season is massive i think it's massive for any team in general yeah so as things stand the back line should be something like uh assuming trent isn't out for long so i'm um, just including trent in the bigger picture it's going to be trent alisson at the back joel matip hopefully but another injury prone player you'll never know bro when he's never going know. to he's made, he's made of glass he's he's done his monthly quota of playing one game see, it's funny yeah. but at the same time it's extremely sad i don't know see like they say no it hurts only the first time and after a stage yeah. it becomes the new normal and i think i started accepting okay the season is going to be long for us so uh, touch wood if everything is okay 
Trent, um, uh, Joel Matip, and Klopp sees Fabinho at the back. So Fabinho. Uh, in terms of rotation, there's this academy kid, Rice Williams. Yeah. So he's been rated very highly. So should be him. Then there is also another player, Nathaniel Phillips, who was yeah extremely good against West Ham. He played against played. West Ham. Yeah. Was a brilliant performance. So yeah, as things stands, uh, the only thing and yeah, Robertson on that and I think Liverpool fans on the whole, I think everyone will be extremely thankful for not wo- Genie be leaving us in the summer. I think. No, let's be honest. I think why I'm saying this is because I won't say I was part of this, but yeah. even I also gave a thought like because at one stage the rumors were Thiago will happen only if Genie's gone. Yeah. Okay. So I was also, and Genie wasn't extending his contract. So I was also part of the thinking that okay, why can't we make Genie move and get in Thiago? Get in Thiago. Yeah. Yeah, but you now how things have panned out, I think <laughs> the quality in midfield will not drop even if Fabinho's moved to the centre back. Yeah. There's going to be Genie. Uh, there's going to be Hendo. There's going to be Thiago coming back. So yeah. I'm extremely thankful, like every Liverpool fan, that we didn't let Genie go in the summer. There have been uh, rumors or talks of Klopp feeding Jordan Henderson at centre back. What do you think? Like, is he a really good uh, option as a makeshift centre back, or do you think that uh, Wijnaldum could play in that centre back role? No, I think as things stands, it's only Fabinho who's going to be covered. Who I think he's okay. the he's the one with the right. Uh, what to say? The abilities to play centre back as things stand. Okay, yeah. See, yeah. in in five years, Klopp one day decided to make Genie Wijnaldum play centre back against Brighton in 2017. Yeah. But then it's too small a sample space to say that he can play there. But then surprisingly, uh, I think around two weeks back, he did talk about the idea of having Andy Robertson at centre back, and this oh. is going to be extremely funny because, see, uh, he's. Very short for a centre back in the very first place. Yeah. So we don't know as uh, it's going to be extremely unpredictable to see what's going to happen. But the mo- one thing is certain: if Fabinho is going to be fit, it's him who's going to play at centre back. The only question comes: what if one of the now the available centre backs is taken a knock or something? If like how Tierney plays centre back for Arsenal, maybe yeah. we can see Andy Robertson play centre back and. Costa Simicas, whom we got this summer, play left back. Left back so there yeah. are options. Uh, no, in, in my opinion, it's all about somewhere getting over the line till January because I'm pretty sure that we are signing a centre back in January. Yeah, I'm. I'm extremely sure. I, I, I was very sure even with Van Dijk being out, and now now that Joe Gomez is out, it's become even more inevitable that we are signing a centre back. And there are also shouts about how we can offer a contract to a free agent. I think Liverpool are talking with the Premier League to see if they can get in a free agent at this point because we have two people out of the registered Premier League squad for the entire season by the looks of it. Yeah. So, in terms Uh, of replacement, they might be looking, I don't know. Barcelona tried the same thing in this January, right? Where they signed Martin (laughs) Braithwaite. No, but Uh, but the thing is, La Liga has that rule. It is part of La Liga's rules. But then we… Because… But then I haven't seen anything like that happen in Premier League so far. So, it's going to be interesting seeing how things pan out. But inevitably, even if that is not happening, I'm pretty sure in January that Liverpool are getting a centre-back for sure. Yeah. But can't expect anyone like Opamakano, but yeah, bro, at this stage, I'm ready to take anyone. Just anyone who is who's a centre-back. I think right now, the more than the quality, the quantity is becoming a big thing. So, yeah. it'll be but good names are there. I, I, I saw the shortlisted names according to the reputable sources, obviously. So, yeah, yeah uh, hopefully. Yeah, I think uh, Ojan Kabak was also linked, right, to you guys, even in the summer. And uh, you, I think you guys will try to go for him or Upamecano. I think uh, Upamecano will... I hope Upamecano doesn't join Liverpool, seriously. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about the future. Like, uh, now you guys are in a pretty... You've got to face Leicester. You've got to face Wolves. Uh, what do you think? Let's talk about Leicester. What do you think Klopp will try to do against Leicester? Uh, between now and January, I saw the fixtures. Yeah. Honestly, I think only Tottenham might be the D 
okay fecal fixture okay. uh, i mean I, i really think tottenham should be the difficult one because of your same mourinho and things yeah but then the other teams i think we might just get over the line that's my understanding see like i have always said this bunch of mentality monsters and there is no better time to show it again for them yeah. so i think uh, they'll just get over the line when it comes between the fixtures between now and january and hopefully we the next champions league game i think it's against atlanta at anfield just yeah. feel the strongest eleven seal the qualification and just play the kids in the remaining two games and just protect everyone because it doesn't make sense anymore for the any of the main eleven players to play for yeah. the remaining two games after sealing qualification and with respect to leicester good game brendan rodgers known fellow yeah so, former liverpool guy yeah so should be an interesting one with wadi being there on form always yeah should be an, it should be a tight one but still expecting us to progress with thiago coming back fabinho back who else will be yeah. back oh yeah now this salas covid Salah. news has shattered me bro <laughs> my fpl <laughs> is also ruined because of this <laughs> everybody i also have uh, salah at my fpl so hopefully i have salah i, I have trent <laughs> i have to do all these changes now <laughs> And I already used my wild card, man. I'm screwed. I have also done it with wild card. <laughs> uh, but uh, like you said, uh, you're going to have a very tough time. And Klopp came out and uh, said that you guys, sh- like not you guys only, but every team should have more than five subs. What do you feel about that uh, rule? Do you think that uh, that rule should be implemented, or do you think that it should be like three subs? Sometimes I just don't understand why they think they are the ultimate league that is playing the game of football. when the whole world is been given the five sub rule i cannot mm. understand the point of not having a five sub rule see like again the again again coming back to the point of everything when it comes to this season is going to be an exception i don't want the five sub rule maybe on a normal season but then for this season when people are when games are coming thick and thin in every once in three days five subs rule is important and i don't know why premier league is totally opposed to the idea i don't know why they want to behave different to other leagues i don't know what edge they have or what sort of i don't know see the quality drops end of the day like yeah. because of the, their own decision you you'll have star players out and like yeah all the players are out and you're able to see the injuries piling up with day in and day out yeah i think every manager is vocal about the five sub rule hopefully yeah. there could be another meeting and they sort it out i think it's important yeah. maybe i personally think it is because of the pressure from the lower clubs who don't have the quality players at 23 people so maybe because in premier league every decision is taken of majority yeah. so it has to be two third of the votes it's 14 so 14 votes has to come in that case to for a decision to be made so hopefully the top 6 are vocal about it it's evident then i'm also sure teams like leicester and all will be vocal about the idea of five subs hopefully it happens and uh, lastly uh, still think that the title is liverpool's to lose see the thing is i don't know how many people will watch this if i say this and i don't know how many people will go on to your comment or find me on my instagram bro no, i no, still no. think that we'll win the league i don't know why i'm feeling this way at all i don't know i just can't see as see see if you like in 38 games i think liverpool are still the best and yeah. along with man city of course for me other teams yeah see they people will push maybe not a 97 point season or a 90 plus point season but definitely at the end of 30 weeks i'm pretty sure liverpool will again retain the title i think you see i'm being you know okay yeah, van dijk's out sad and all that but then this team isn't really built around van dijk alone yeah so you have sala at the front you have sadio you have thiago you have absolute match winners I never used to yeah. say this before because there wasn't really anything. But yeah, we have serial winners now. In terms of yeah, who can guys... do what is yeah. Now the team has players who has won, who has seen lot of success in these last twenty four odd months. So they know yeah. what it takes to like. And if we get somewhere, if we are in a reasonable position by January, like saying around one or two, with yeah. maybe three, four, five points difference between first in case if we are not leading. I am certain that we'll sign a centre back and we'll win the league. Yeah, I think we've covered everything that we yeah, wanted to good. cover. It was a good talk. It was a good talk, Adi. 
it yeah, was like okay. really nice having you back on the show and My yeah i hope you do come back again and uh, happy diwali to you bro yeah happy diwali to you and to all the people who will be watching i don't know when though but then yeah even if it is pretty late belated diwali yeah. wishes belated diwali wishes okay uh thank you so much guys for listening and tuning into the show uh please leave a like and comment and subscribe uh it is free it really helps us it motivates us a lot to put on more content and uh yeah for today like for the final time this is akash this is adi signing out peace and happy diwali Bye guys see you